Hey guys, what's up? And welcome to a new campaign. That's right, a brand new uh, series, I guess. But And if you cannot read the title of this game, or you're just, you know, lazy, then I'll read it for you. Dominion 4, Thrones of Ascension. Alright, I got this game like maybe a week ago, two weeks ago, I don't know. I got it, sometime soon. And, uh, I don't know what map to play on. Hmm. Let's go medium random map. Na game name, uh, LP. Easy enough, right? right? And uh, I'm actually gonna be playing a in the early, and another YouTuber that uh, his name is Tokshin. I will uh, put the link to his channel in the uh, the description. My bad. And uh, you guys should go check him out. He does a lot of uh, cool gameplay videos. He's I really like him. Um, he does a lot of Dominion 4 stuff. He uh, is playing Rome 2 right now, too. Uh, there's, he has several other series going on. You should just really go check him out. He's a lot better at this game than I am. So if you want someone who has skill, then you need to uh, need to go talk, see what he he's doing. Yeah, so he recommend the Irmer. Ir, Irmer? Erberderberder? Yeah, the Erberderberder. Can I? I want to read these guys. All right, I guess we'll do it later. But uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. There we go. Um, hmm. Uh, that that sounds good. I don't think I need to change anything. And we're gonna do normal, cause you know I'm I'm a scrub lord. This game. I'm not gonna do a disciple game, cause pff, who needs allies? All right. Ermer is an empire centered around a great city. For centuries, it has grown and become more and more influential. Traders and travelers from near and far come to the city by military campaigns, dip diplomacy, and trade. Ermer has become a power to be reckoned with. By adopting local traditions and beliefs, the Ermorians er posed little threat to neighbors and conquered peoples. But this has begun to change. A new god is, has, is arising. Old Sin... Oh my goodness, I can't... S s that word. Syncr syncretistic. Sy syncretistic. Yeah? Faith and spirits, spirit worship, were banned by a prophet dressed in white shrouds. The remnants of his body and shrouds are buried in the holy city of Eldergate, where the ad adherents of the new faith are awaiting the arrival of the reawakening God foreseen by the prophet. An all in the all encompassing old state cult of Num Numinus still survives, but the Pont. Pontifices and Flamen are slowly adopting the new faith. All right, our race is human, military, human legionaries with lizard auxiliaries, magic, all paths except blood, primarily fire, death, and astral. I guess that's what we'll be focusing on then. Uh, priests, powerful, can heal afflictions. All right, sweet. That's what we need. <laughs> uh, I don't think I, I want my god to be a fountain. Um... Who would be cool? I don't even know. Hmm. There's a deer, dude. I want a deer, dude. The being is the lord of an ancient forest and all its inhabitants. The lord of the wild practices the old arts and is a master of nature and blood magic. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not... Hmm. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it, friend. Sorry. I'm just not on the mood for you today. We could do someone cool. Like the lizard peoples. Oh. Oh no. Oops, sorry about that, guys. Something just randomly popped up on my screen. Had to go deal with that. We need to be a demi lich. A tiny little pile of bones. That'd be cool, right? No, cancel. Sorry. Didn't mean to do that. Nope. Alright. Uh. Yeah, I'm taking. I feel like I'm taking way too long for this. Hmm. Let's just be. Let's just be Titan of War and Wisdom. I like this. All right. So primarily death and what else? Munition. Death, fire, and astral. So I guess I will increase his fire. Actually, increases that so that we have someone who can do uh, other stuff. I don't know. I'm going to imprison him because, you know, get more of the design points. Uh... Actually, I probably shouldn't focus too much on this because uh, I think they're 
sacred units aren't that powerful, so I'm going to focus a lot more on the Dominion. So get this up. The nice things in life, you know? Uh, put some order in there, too. Actually, I don't want this. No, I can't have... Okay. I don't want that. I good? Thank you. Alright. Nope. Can't do that. Alright. What if I did that? Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> let's just play. I like playing around with this thing. Alright. That, that'll work. Alright, so... Our god will be a level 3 in fire, level 1 in air, 0 in water, 3 in uh, earth, 3 in astral, 2 in death, and 0, 0 in forest, or er, bleh, nature and blood. So, you got 5 dominion and all that nice stuff, the productivity and nice things, got it. Alright, let's go. And our pretender god's name fire lungs that works all praise yes all praise me uh renaming is allowed uh i will if anyone wants to be uh named after a general or do you want a general name after you just uh comment in the comments i will make a list uh if you don't care what kind of general you are just be like i just want to be a general if you have a specific kind of general that you want to be then tell me so i can figure that out uh oops um. Alright, let's do that one. Thrones of Ascension. I'm at a level 3 thrown in there. A level 3, two level 2s. Uh, Ascension points required. I get 15. So I do what I want. Wait. Yeah. 15, 7, 1. No, that's probably not a good idea. Let's do like. 10, 3. Sorry, guys. This is simple math that I need to do in my head. Alright, that, sh that should be fine. That should be fine. Alright. Uh, yep, everything looks good. Let's start it. Uh, this episode, I'll just go over basically the units of Ermor. 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 There you go. I'm just going to... Mm, Ermor. That sounds like a good name to call it. But let's just... Planting the trees. It's always good to save the environment, right? Uh, I played uh, in the early game age as uh, the Oni before. Uh, and I had to fight the monkey people. Can't remember their names or whatever. But the monkey people. Those guys are annoying. Especially when the o Oni have really, uh, you know, little to no range at all. Besides, like... <laughs> the the goblin bows, so goblin bows like they just route and they're just terrible shots. Anyways, doesn't even matter. Well, no way. I lied to you. They also have bandit archers, but eh, I'm not really much of a range guy in this game. Too much friendly fire, I guess. And that's good because I heard the Ermor only have like slingers. I was I was uh, told. Fine tuning start starting positions. Oh, how long does that have to take? Okay. Do, do, except at least you guys can enjoy the nice background of whimsical fog. Ooh. Yeah, fun stuff. Hmm. Fine tuning starting positions. Let's go. How long? Can I can I not fine tune positions and just go? Yes? Yes please. Man, the entire episode might just be this screen. Hmm. Well, whatever, it gives me a chance to talk, I guess. Uh, anyways, how is your guys' day going? Mine's not too bad. It's about what time to here. 12 o'clock in the afternoon slash morning, turning into the afternoon, you know what I'm saying? It's about 12 that time. Uh, huh. Ooh, and then the beginning of, and this is the same screens that you'll get over and over again whenever you start a campaign. And, oop, sweet, okay. Let's go to army setup. Oh, not army setup. Let's go to recruit units and check out our units. All right, so we have a slinger, uh, 10 HP. That's standard. I've learned attack skill the below standard protection five because they suck. We got a dagger, a sling. Slingers are cheap missile units. They are not very accurate or deadly. They are not good melee units. So in other words, 
don't buy them unless you have to. So we got Levy. The levies of Ermorian skirmishers armed with javelins and spears. They initiate the engagement by throwing javelins at the enemy. So 10 hit points. Since skill is higher than average. Uh, attack skill 10. Strength 10. Uh, yeah, solid solid unit for uh, how much they they uh, cost, which is how much exactly? 10-8. 8-9. 8 10-8. Alright. The Sinsi are quickly levied troops and militia. They are often placed in the rear where they are out of the way. <laughs> so they basically, these guys are, uh, you know. Hold on, what's the difference between these guys? Defense skill 13, since skill 14. These guys, huh. I don't know. It's weird. Um, is there anything different here? Very confused. Wait, is the morale different? Oh, nope. Oh. Ten morale. Eight, yeah, I guess these guys have more morale. That's cool. All right, Raris, the Rarii, <laughs> our young soldiers are not yet experienced enough to join the Hastati. They are often uh, placed behind the Triarii where they should be safe. Uh, so basically, uh, these. What what I'm gathering from just the pictures themselves is that this faction's a lot like Rome. I know uh, some of you are just like, you idiot, I knew that from the start, but I didn't. I, don't, I told you I don't play this game often. Gold. <laughs> Not bad stats. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, and then you got the Hastatis. The Hastati are the basic unit of the Armorian army. They form the first line and will bear the brunt of the enemy attack. They are armed with a sword, gel, and tower shield. They wear the Lorica Hamata, a light version of the Marverni chainmail. Sweet, sweet. That's cool stuff, I guess. And you're looking at defense skills about 16. That's not bad. Protection 11. Hit points 10. You know, average for a human. So that guy's uh, better than the rest of these guys. All right. So you got the prin Princapes now. Our elite warriors inform a second line behind the Stadi. If the Stadi fall, the Princapes will deal a second and decisive blow against the enemy. They are armed as the armed as the Hastati, but wear the thick-scaled Lorica Squamata. Hmm. Excellent. Oh, their head points are 11 this time, and they got a bit more ups on the stats here. So yeah, a lot more. Yeah, those guys are more of my elite units. Uh, and then you got the... Oh. <laughs> Old age. Alright. Oh, these guys are formation fighters. Sweet. Triari Triarii are the last defense of the legionary army and form the third rank of the formation. They are hand-picked old veterans trusted not to rout. They are given heavy plate armor and long spears and fight in defense formations. The Triarii have great morale, but they are older and weaker than most soldiers in the legion. Alright, so... Hmm. That's not good. So what I'm hearing is I will maybe recruit a few of these guys, not too many, because old age, not very good. We got a standard here. I should just create an entire army of standards, shouldn't I? That'd be great. Standard bearers are prominent soldiers entrusted with the care of a standard. Standards are important to the morale of legions, and their presence will strengthen the spirit of nearby soldiers. Alright, so standard, this is only inspire courage. Courage! Alright, so one of one are these guys in the army. Got it. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> lizard auxilias. So, yeah, I guess we got a few lizard people here. During the subjugation of Satis, lizard soldiers were recruited into the Armorian ranks. Lizard auxiliaries have since been a regular part of the Armorian army. Lizards are armed as the Hastati, but wear ringmail cuirass of Satissian design and I'll use a round shield instead of the tower shield standard of the Imperial Legions. Alright. So, uh, hmm. I may want to make, like, just a lizard army. Because they are the auxiliaries, auxiliaries right? And then we got our equites, our, our cavalry. Do we have any more cavalry? Yeah, we have one more cavalry besides them. Um, light land stuff. Protection, not bad. Defense skill, pretty high. The equ Equites are nobles who have joined the Armorian army. They wear the scaled Lorica Squamata and are armed with a longsword and a light lance. Cool, cool stuff. I like it. Then we got our 
Gladiators, I'm guessing? Yep, gladiators are slaves trained to fight in the arena for the Emperor's pleasure. Gladiators who become uh, very skilled in combat are often use, use, often use exotic weapons. In times of crisis, they are, can be used in warfare in return for their freedom. They are quick to levy, but will only fight one battle before leaving. Hmm. Gladiators, are, yeah, this one, same thing, just a different weapon. So this guy has a trident and a net. This guy has a flail. How long is the flail? Length of three. And if you have never seen a, uh, uh, Dominion Four before, uh, length is important because it has a uh, chance to, uh, like, if you say my soldier, my spearman has a length of four on his spear, you know, because I think he does, and then uh, somebody else tries to attack him with a short sword, which has a length of two, then I believe. Yeah, hold on, let me read this real quick. A yeah, attack skill is used against the enemy's defense skill to determine whether the repel is successful. So basically, if he has a higher t attack skill than the enemy, then he has a chance to uh, repel the attack and take no damage. So, that's cool. So we got our only our only sacred unit for the, our normal infantries. The equites of the Sacred Shout are sacred champions of the new faith. Each of them wear a white replica of the sacred shroud, shroud worn by the prophet shrouded in white. The blessing of this sacred cloth grants them unsurpassed healing abilities. They are among the most respected cavalry units in the world of men. Units. Oh, that's a... Uh, hmm. Hmm. I like that. I like that a lot. So, ooh, a bit pricey though. Uh, 13 hit points. Hmm, their stats aren't that bad. Yeah, let's go after we've since we've seen all of our units and everything. Let's uh let's check out our stuff here. Our scout, basic scout, you know, scouts are train. You can use uh, scouts to scout out enemy provinces. If you haven't uh, seen this, you can just move them from province to province without them getting caught. See, is a stealth of stealthy of 50. So you know. Then we have oh we have an assassin. <clears throat> I've never played a. Uh, one second. <coughs> oh, sorry. Something's caught in my throat. I've never had an assassin. I've never played a race with assassins before. Again, I haven't played this game very long, so I only have, like, two other things I've tried. Uh, this unit can assassinate command. Mm hmm I like this. Uh, if any of you want to be assassins, I may actually uh, have, have use for you. And we have our centurions. Centurions are lesser commanders of the Imperial Legions. They wear plate cuirasses for protection. So yeah, uh, these guys are, you know, little little commanders. Then we have our Legatus Legion Legionis. The Legatus Legionis is a high commander of an Imperial Legion. Only the most able commanders are chosen for the task, and only candidates with political backing, strong personalities, and exceptional skill receive the honor. These able men command great respect with their soldiers, and will inspire them to great deeds. Sweet. All right. So probably gonna have like a few of these, and then like mostly these commanders for like a you know a role play role play aspect of it because i mean you, you can't have like a ton of these commanders that wouldn't make sense because these guys are very rare so we have our acolytes now our level one priest and is sacred acolytes are lowly priests of the new faith and they are sent in small parishes and are rarely allowed to lead soldiers well i, I wouldn't allow an acolyte to lead soldiers anyways it doesn't matter <laughs> oh fortune teller that's cool so we have our Augur, a level 1 Fire Mage, a level 1 Astral, 9 nine Research Capabilities, and Fire Resistance. Augurs are Soothsayers and Seers who use flames and license to foretell the future and the will of the supernatural forces. Augurs are skilled in fire and astral magic. That's cool. So we have an, then we have an Augur Elder. Just slightly different. Augur Elders are Masters of Augury. <laughs> That's, I like that word. Their skills are considerable, and they guide emperors and generals alike, but they are rarely trusted. Recently, they have become even more secretive, and rumor has it that they have divined the end of the empire. The elders have sent several expeditions to the ancient kingdom of Assist to find an old path of magic that will lead the empire to world domination. Hmm. That's pretty cool. So, we have uh, level 2 fire, level 1 astral, level 2 death and then possible paths apparently there's a 100% chance of me getting another magic but only a 10% of getting another one added onto that we can only get wind extra there that's cool I guess 17 uh, 
Research, flame resistant, old age, and fortune teller. Yeah, old age, not that great. Don't like this. Starting, current age 68. Starting of old age 46. All right, all right. Then we have our Bishop of the Sacred Shroud. Bishops of the Sacred Shroud are ye religious magistrates of the Awakening God. They're, they wear holy replicas of the Sacred Shroud of the Prophet. The sacred piece of cloth gives them unsurpassed healing abilities. They have all but replaced the Flamen as priests in the Empire. Hmm. So, this unit heals affliction. That's cool. The unit with this ability will heal other units in the same province automatically. Up to one affliction per month will be removed. <coughs> oh my goodness. My throat just gave out on me. I don't know what happened there. Removed for every point in this ability. Undead and lifeless beings are not affected by this ability. That's cool. Huh. So I'm gonna... I guess I'm keeping one of these guys with uh, my armies just in case uh, some wounds go down, you know? Because uh, your your soldiers can like lose eyes and stuff. It's it's saddening. Like, <laughs> I've seen a guy with up to like four afflictions. One, he's lost an arm, he's lost an eye. I'm like, wow, how are you? How are you still fighting? I should, probably should discharge you, but I was like, eh, you're fine. You're, you can keep fighting then, you're fine. Just just walk it off, walk it off over there. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, he's also a level 2 priest, and he's sacred. Excellent. And then we have our, this guy. The Archbishops of Eldergate are the highest ranking priests of the Awakening God. They wear holy replicas of the sacred shroud of the prophet. The sacred piece of cloth gives them unsurpassed healing abilities, yes. They have all but replaced the old pontifices as religious magistrates of the empire sweet so this is our our sweet mage that's super awesome or not mage what am i saying our priest is super awesome so level three priest he's sacred can re also like heals afflictions healer oh well old age isn't that great but starting oh this current age is 96 and then these guys will not live long. That's what I'm hearing, is that these guys do not live very long. So who's our... Uh, so our Augur Elder slash Augurs here are going to be our main mages for the... F so yeah, that's our uh, units, guys. I'm going to end the episode here. Uh, thanks for watching this, if you did. Uh, stay tuned for more episodes. I probably should have one. I might upload another one the same day today. But who knows? But yeah, you guys have a great rest of the day. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, if you want to be a general, make sure to put your name in the comments, and I will add you. Alright, you guys have a great rest of the day.